After Champion Edition, Turbo, Super, Super Turbo and Lord knows what else, and even though we're currently enjoying the infant years of Street Fighter V, the second iteration of the game is making a comeback soon with a brand new version. Ultra Street Fighter 2 The Final Challengers is set to be released in 2017 for the Nintendo Switch, bringing an updated version of 1994 Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo and featuring two graphical styles, classic pixel art and updated high definition sprites. Although the game appears to have its merits and, if I were to be completely honest, I am at least a little bit curious to check the final result for myself, the project does raise quite a bit of red flags. So much so that I can't see how this could end up being anything more than just a passing trend when it comes out. Here's what I think is wrong with Ultra Street Fighter 2. The HD Graphics In a previous attempt to bring Super Turbo back, Capcom released Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix in 2008 in digital format for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. The game featured new HD sprites made by Udon Entertainment that took the quite daunting task of adapting them to the hitboxes used by the original pixel art, with mixed results. You gotta give them credit for the effort, because they had to perform quite a lot of miracles in many situations, but the truth is that nobody was too impressed with the results. Even the biggest defenders of the game, like myself, have to admit that the graphics sometimes felt a little weird. It's one thing to create something with HD sprites, like the King of Fighters was doing before KOF 14, but using them to cover up old low definition sprites proves to be a flawed tactic. HD Remix sold well and was well received at first, but quickly disappeared into oblivion, while more competent fighting games tend to last much longer. The experts in resource recycling they are, Capcom will be utilizing the same HD sprites for this new title, with the only difference being that now they'll be optional, while in HD Remix, sticking to the old sprites also meant not making use of any of the changes made to the game. Needless to say, the graphics once again fluctuate between beautiful and awkward, depending on what you have on screen. Despite all their efforts, most players will probably prefer to stick with the original sprites, so all that work remains quite pointless, doesn't it? Nobody wants Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo rebalanced. Here's another thing HD Remix already tried back in 2008. Under the supervision of Backbone Entertainment's David Serling, HD Remix introduced a series of balance changes to the game, aiming to give more characters the tools necessary to win at higher levels of competition. The changes were plenty and diverse, from making Kami's hooligan combination input much easier, to greatly increasing the horizontal range of Gaio's heavy flash kick. Serling even wanted to make Akuma, notoriously overpowered in the original release, a fair character to face other players, introducing a number of nerfs to his gameplay. This goal failed though, as even with the adjustments, his tools were deemed too strong by the community and the character remained banned at any tournaments. But how about the reception of the balance changes? Well, to be honest, they were mostly ignored. The community just didn't want to deal with the changes made to their characters, even if it meant a better overall experience. After so many years learning how to play your favorites, it's no wonder a lot of people were not thrilled by the perspective of having to relearn the game. So, some might say Sterling's changes were bad, some might say they were good, but the truth is that they were mostly inconsequential. HD Remix faded out and, instead, the original Super Turbo remains played at side tournaments to this day, with no one talking about Sterling's balance changes. Ultra is also bringing its own set of balance changes, with some, like the ability to counter trolls, already being discovered and altering heavily how the game will play. Even though Capcom is probably taking a lot more care into these changes than they did in 2008, and despite the fact that they might even make for a compelling competitive title, I'm not so sure people will be open to them. At least that's not what history has showed us. Akuma, Evil Ryu and Violent Ken are broken. This might change by the game's official release date, but so far, it seems that the three Shadow clones are going to be a little too strong for most of the competition of the game. If confirmed, this basically means we won't be getting any new characters in this version. What's the point of adding two extra fan favorites if you make them too strong to be used in a fair game? Or what about Akuma that couldn't be balanced in HD Remix? Will Capcom, with Ultra Street Fighter 2, be able to do what Serling's Backbone Entertainment couldn't? It remains to be seen, since the game is not out by the time this video is being made, but as I mentioned, the first impressions point to no, and history, once again, is not on their side. We might in the end be looking at a game featuring only the original 16 cast members, and nothing else. Pilot Ken and Ivor Ryu are pilot swaps. 
even worse than being broken. Valent Ken and Ivo Ryu will be a clear example of pilot swap characters, a trend popular in the 90s that wasn't being repeated lately. These days we still get some characters with extremely similar playstyles, but at least they feature some exclusive animations and are visually different from one another. That's not the case with the new challengers in Ultra Street Fighter 2, though. Both Ivo Ryu and Violet Ken won't feature a single new sprite, so all of their new moves will be borrowing from other animations, which kinda makes them look half-assed. I understand the issues though, with the original HD graphics, any changes would have to be made twice and probably demand way more work than Capcom originally planned to put into it. But come on, it wouldn't kill them to make at least a few changes, like giving Ivo Ryu his axe kick from Street Fighter 4. So brace yourself for some childhood memories, as memories from the palette swap ninjas from Mortal Kombat Trilogy will surely come back as you test these, air quote, brand new challengers. Old characters are gone. Even though I'm curious to check the new versions of Ken and Ryu, you'll probably notice I'm not thrilled about it, and it gets even worse when you realize that the price we're paying for them is to lose the old versions of the cast. You see, Super Turbo allowed players to input a code at the select screen to be able to play with slightly altered versions of their characters, sacrificing some tools in order to get other things in return. Some were simply worse, others were even, and a few, like old Sagat, were considered quite powerful and often mentioned as one of the strongest characters of the game. The best part though, they were all fair in tournament, meaning that if we take into account the alternate versions of each of the original 16 characters, we actually had 32 different options to choose from. Alternate versions are a cheap and many times broken way of increasing the cast in a fighting game. So I wouldn't normally be so fierce about it, but in Super Turbo they're a heavy part of its history. So it just won't be the same thing without them. Nintendo Switch exclusive. And finally, here's the number one problem for this game. Even if people show interest in the HD graphics and the balance changes, even if no character is left too broken for tournament and the old versions return, Ultra Street Fighter 2 will still be, at least at first, available only for the absolutely worst platform possible to catch the attention of the fighting game community. It's not so much that Nintendo these days is better or worse than the competition, they're just different, very different. They go for a different style of marketing and aim at a separate part of the audience. Nintendo gamers are plenty, but 2D fighters they are not. Not usually at least. And even if they are, how is anyone expected to play Street Fighter with the Switch controller? I guess it works, barely, but that's not enough, is it? Sure, with time there will probably be other third-party joysticks to choose from, but that's not what most people are going to be using. It's Tatsunoko vs Capcom all over again. I had only one chance to play that game, but I couldn't even make good use of it, because the Wiimote is not what you want to have in your hands when you're playing a fighting game. Should this game come out for PS4, Xbox One or PC, maybe things would be different, but as a Switch exclusive? I expect it to make a splash when it's released and then quickly disappear, never to be seen again. So that's why I don't see a bright future for Ultra Street Fighter 2. There's still time to change some things before it's released, but that's my opinion for now. What's yours? Are you excited about this new version of Street Fighter 2? Or do you agree with me that this isn't going to be exactly memorable? I'll see you guys later.